students today we are going to study in brief the origin and development of Mughal school of miniature painting which was brought to India by the Mughals from Central Asia and how it developed into a much superior art form by attaining the fine nuances of Rajasthani school of miniature painting in its form and content. While studying uh, the study of miniature painting of the school from Mughal school, some common and general questions which often come to our mind are what is the origin of the Mughal school of painting, when it was initiated in India and by whom, what is the subject matter and the characteristics of Mughal school of miniature painting, who are the artists and the patrons who helped this style of painting in attaining a very distinctive and appreciable art form. The evolution of Mughal school of miniature painting, which roughly spanned three centuries, marked a colorful phase in Indian cultural history. Whilst in order to understand the Mughal school of miniature painting, the traditions in which it has its roots should be considered. The Mughal school was not a new style in itself. It was the same Rajasthani school well defined and polished by the Persian effect. The source of miniature painting under the Mughal school was Persian. The art of Persia was greatly influenced by the Mongolian art and there were some glimpses of pre timurid and Timurid art styles that were prevalent at that time in the region of Central Asia. This was that blend of art that the art of the Chinese Turkestan and that of Persia that travelled to India. In its ideal surroundings blossomed and softened thus attaining the best elements of the Indian indigenous traditions acquired the best elements that flowered into a great and noble art form which has its own distinctive character, not only as a great art, court art, but also as a distinct development closely associated with the art of the country or the land where it blossomed. The Mughals were the great lovers of art. First of all, Humayu brought some Persian artists with him who painted in their own style. The Mughals were very much impressed by the Rajasthani school of miniature painting. Thus, a new style of painting developed in the land of India with the mixture of Persian miniatures and Rajasthani elements becoming the famous Mughal school of miniature painting. Though it can be considered as a style of art with Indian ethos, form and content, but the journal ornamentation and border decoration imbibed from the Persian style hashiyas or borders thus has greatly enhanced its aesthetic value. Mughals had a traditional love for painting as their ancestors were Mongols who came from Central Asia. Babur, the fifth descendant from the Timur dynasty was established Mughal rule in India. He had a great liking for Bizat, the famous artist of his time, as he has praised him in his autobiography Babur Nama. Bizat was also known as the Rafael of the East. Babur lived with Shah Tamashp of the Brace with a period of one year and where he was introduced by the two important painters of the Pisad school, namely Mir Sayyid Ali of Tabriz and Khwaja Abu Samad of Shiraz. Later on, both these artists came to Kabul at the court of Humayu. From these artists, Humayu got the painting of Dastani Amir Hamza painted and a very little portion of the same was completed during his whole lifetime. 
Humayun died in 1555 AD after having achieved the throne of Delhi and left his son Akbar as his successor of the same. Akbar was hardly 13 when he came to the throne in 1556 AD. In spite of being an illiterate, he possessed a rare flair for appreciation of learning and music. He was a very liberal and intelligent king. Having an artist in his youth, he zealously patronized art and he was of the view that the artist who draws with accuracy can only attain the supremacy of the creator and is capable of infusing life into the objects drawn by the artist having complete dedication and creative acumen. In Aine Akbari, it has been written that Akbar has a great regard and respect for his painters. Good compositions were rewarded. That is the reason that the paintings under the Akbar reign were almost parallel to those of the Bizad period. During the Akbar's time, the Persian and Rajasthani elements, they are mixed into one, thus becoming the famous Akbari school of Mughal painting. At this time, the paintings were, were of very high order. One can see life blooming therein and the color schemes are also improved. In his court, he means Akbar patronized both Hindu and Mughal artists. Abul Fazal, the great art historian under the Akbar's court, observed that the Hindu painters were generally better painters of emotions than the Muslim ones. Now we come to discuss about the types of paintings under the Akbar's time. During the reign of Akbar, the paintings can be divided into five categories. Number one, paintings on non-Indian stories like Amir Hamza and paintings on Shahnama. Paintings on Indian stories such as paintings on Panch Tantra, Ramayan and Mahabharata. Portrait painting under which the portraits of Akbar and his courtiers came. Historical paintings such as based on Tiwarik Ekhandane Timura and Akbar Nama. Social life paintings under which the paintings of Sufis, saints, village scenes and festivals were painted. Now we come to discuss about some prominent artists or painters under the Akbar's court. The foremost was Mir Sayyid Ali of Tabriz. He was a Safavid painter and he came to the court of Akbar on the request of Humayu. The manuscript of Hamza Nama was painted under his supervision. Another artist from Persia was Khwaja Abu Samad of Shiraz. He was the director of the art gallery of Fatehpur Sikri in the time of Akbar. Instead of being a good painter, he was also a very good calligraphist. He also supervised the paintings of Hamza Nama manuscripts. Daswant, he was the poor son of a planquin bearer whom Akbar discovered and apprenticed to Khwaja Abu Samad of Shiraz. Later on, Daswant became to be known as the foremost or versatile painters among the Hindu artists in the court of Akbar. Most of the paintings of the Rasmanama manuscript are executed by him. Basavan, he was expert in portrait painting, background and color schemes. The names of the artists like Mukund, Miskeen, Khemkaran, Keshavlal, Madhu and Harvansh were also noteworthy. 
the illustrations of manuscripts like Razmanama, Hamza Nama, Ramayan, Babar Nama, Shah Nama, Ayar Danish, and Nal Daman, and other beautifully illustrated manuscripts of the period are of great artistic achievement. Still, in this period, the Persian treatment of the background and the landscape is obvious. Jahangir too was a great patron and appreciator of art. He was very fond of birds, animals and trees. He was an observer, a collector and a worshipper of nature's beauty. He was also a curious lover of painting and also had a great respect for his painters. Being a great critic of art, Jahangir has the ability that he could easily differentiate the different styles of the artists by just having a glance over their work. The emperor had a great fascination for his portraits that were portrayed or bewitchingly painted by such celebrated artists. The main highlight of the works under the Jahangir's time was the indulgence in the depiction of nature, animals, birds and floral patterns. There was a great element of realism in the portraiture during the time of Jahangir. Akka Riza, Abdul Hassan and Bishandas were one of the most prominent painters in the court of Jahangir. Ustad Mansoor was matchless among the bird painters. His paintings of the turkey cock is an object of praise in the world. Jahangir was very fond of making albums. Wherever he got the beautiful paintings of birds, animals, different trees, flowers, nature and hunting scene, he used to purchase them and offered a handsome price and also then included them in his albums. During his time, Hindu and Muslim artists were so closely linked that if a Hindu artist prepare a border or a hashia in a painting, the Muslim artist then added color onto it. After the death of Jahangir, Shah Jahan became the emperor of the Mughal Empire in 1626 AD. He was more of a lover of architecture than a lover of painting. Painting though flourished under his time, but its heyday was seen during the time of his father. The Mughal painting came with the Mughals, developed with the Mughals and ended with the end of the Mughal Empire. The Mughal art started as an art of illustration and excelled in portraiture. Starting with a strong Persian bias, it slowly assimilated the blend of the indigenous. Now we came to discuss about the technique and ornamentation of the Mughal school of miniature painting. Mostly Mughal school of paintings were done or executed as in the shape of miniatures which are done on the paper as well as on cotton cloth. First of all, three layers of paper were pasted into one to make one strong paper. The complete line drawing of the painting was done on that paper in brown or ochre color which is known as tipai. After that, two coats of lime plaster were done on the same and again the lines were drawn in the painting. Then this is known as Sachi Tipai. Then twice or thrice flat colors were added to the painting. After that, burnishing with the help of the stone at the back of the painting 
was done. Then again flat colors were added. This process is known as Gadkari. The finishing was done by drawing finishing lines. It was called Khulai. After that the paintings was sent to the engraver who draw the ornamentation of the borders or the hashias by using gold or silver colors. The paint used is gauche and the medium is gum arabic mixed with water. Paints were made from animal, vegetable or mineral substances and brushes from animals hairs like the hair from the, of the squirrel. Now we discuss about some characteristics of Mughal school of miniature painting. Number one is profile painting. Profile of faces is the main or prominent characteristics of the Mughal painting which is an influence from Rajasthani school of miniatures. Almost all the portraits are ek chashma, one eyed or in profile. Special ornamentation of the borders are hashias. There is an effect of Iranian art on the Mughal miniatures in the ornamentation of borders by creepers, bushes and shrubs around every painting. Lively depiction of birds and animals. A very prominent characteristic of the Mughal painting is the depiction of birds and animals and trees which as the Mughals from the very beginning they are very fond of beautiful birds and animals. Ustad Mansur was the best painter of the birds. Among the birds, patridges, ducks, hens, cocks, peacocks, pigeons, strokes have been beautifully painted. Elephants, tigers, deers, goats and horses have been remarkably painted in the hunting scenes. Depiction of nature. Trees, plants, rivers and mountains have been remarkably painted under the Mughal painting. If there are three types of trees in a single painting, the each and every leaf of the tree is painted with such a precision that one can easily differentiate the different types of trees in a painting. Fine line drawing. The craftsmanship by fine lines have been always matchless, which can be seen under the portraits of the royal figures. Portrait painting. There is an abundance of portraits in the Mughal school, as every Mughal ruler is fond of portrait painting. Portraits of saints and Sufis are also found along with the portraits of emperors. Costumes. The costumes worn by the figures are beautifully designed with ornamental designs. The main figures, the male figures are shown wearing angrakhas, churidar pajamas and typical Mughal turbans over their heads which are decorated with fine inlaid work. Historical scenes, mostly historical scenes are painted under the Akbar period as he was very fond of painting manuscript paintings like Kissai Amir Hamza. Religious themes, the Mughals did not have any intention to propagate or spread religion through paintings, but during their times some Indian stories like the Panchatantra, Ramayana, Mahabharat, Nal Damayanti, they were prepared and translated into Persian with ornamental and royal splendor. Royal splendor, the Mughal emperors were very much ambitious for their royal splendor and discipline which is keenly amply displayed in their paintings. Ornamental designs, in the paintings of the courts we can find ornamental patterns on the walls of the palaces, floors and also on the ceilings. The walls of the palaces are beautifully decorated with geometrical designs and the floors have been beautiful and ornamental designs of flora and fauna, creepers which are dynamic and smooth. Expression of emotions, the Mughal artists had a special gift of expressing emotions and different sentiments through their paintings. Use of gold and silver color, 
gold and silver color have been wonderfully used under the hashias in the plume of the turbans footwear of the paintings. Beautiful calligraphy. In the Mughal paintings, the themes of the paintings are written in beautiful calligraphic notes by in a strip like shape in the middle of the painting or in either side of the painting. Depiction of Sufis and Saints. Sufis and Saints are skillfully painted in their picturesque huts or forests. Court scenes. Court scenes have been most popular among the themes of the Mughal painting. Well composed court scenes have been painted with fine style. Besides perspective desired atmosphere, beautiful and attractive color scheme and a neat expression through different postures of hands were the main characteristics of Mughal style. Now in the conclusion we can say that it is apparent from Mughal style of painting that it so lies in the depiction of the royal splendor and the narration of the marvelous lifestyle of the Mughals. Thus, embracing the Indian folklore and the cultural traditions at the same time. This genre of miniature art have added new dimensions to the already evolving Rajasthani style of, Mug of miniature painting and thus further enhanced its visual expressions and enriched its aesthetics to a great extent. Thus, the happy blend of the two styles, the Persian and the Rajasthani elements has placed this style of painting at a much higher pedestal in the enchanting world of Indian painting. The most valuable contribution of the Mughal school of miniature painting is a flourishing endeavor to paint portraits of the royal personalities. The another remarkable contribution of the Mughal art will be the depiction of beautiful birds, animals, plants and nature which casts a spell on the beholder. Thank you.